2D basically is a mathematical model so that uh, can be used to uh, that can be used to represent any imperfect state of knowledge which are imperfect state of knowledge which is related to the event data okay now if such data is uh, given to us for uh, training of a machine learning system then what we do if the data is found to be observed data then that can be generated by a process by which we do not fully understand okay that means if such data is found as imperfect state of knowledge then uh, we should you know, we should apply probability we should apply probability uh, theory to represent or model that data and determine the approximate uh, determine the approximation on the uh, feature states which is uh, which is uh, obtained from the given data or uh, if we uh, if we estimate uh, the uncertainty uncertainty is uh, uncertainty is uh, uncertainty is given with uh, that uh, data or feature space then we can model uh, to represent uh, that data using probability theory okay so in that case uh, uh, in that case the use of uh, probability theory uh, would be very meaningful and convincing now uh, if we have been given a practically computable optimality criterion which is known as the training risk for approximation of the given function a therefore a major goal is to find an optimal approximation f cap in the set of all functions okay set of all functions means if we consider if we consider the x is the feature space and fx is the range that means this feature space uh, feature space will contain a set of feature vectors or a collection of feature vector that means for each and every feature vector we can uh, we can get the approximation of the given function f okay so uh, from that uh, approximations we could find the optimal approximation uh, in the set of all functions uh, in the set of all functions in which the mapping is done from the feature space to the uh, feature space to the range okay that means here the feature space and range are uh, related to each other because whenever we try to determine uh, an approximation optimal approximation so that will infer the given feature space or uh, or or a particular uh, feature vector in the feature space so it is important to find the optimal approximation uh, of the given function on the given data the purpose of each uh, regression or classification that means the supervised learning method is to specify a subset p of the set of set of functions which could map from feature space to the range okay that means we could we could infer we could infer uh, to the range and uh, this range will indicate some uh, class information or class level Uh, class level of the corresponding uh, feature vector in the feature space okay so if we could uh, specify subset p of the set of mapping uh, set of functions in the mapping x to uh, x to fx then uh, it could be simultaneously small enough that that an approximately optimal approximation okay uh, optimal approximation that we have determined as f cap and if f cap belongs to uh, capital p here capital p is the subset of the uh, set of functions then that can be found and big enough that this approx optimal approximation will be close to the given function f that means this given function is already determined on the given database now we are trying to find the optimal approximation and if we uh, if we need to specify a subset p of the set of functions in the mapping then uh, uh, this optimal approximation which belongs to the subset p 
uh, can be found and that be and that would be close to the given function f. So uh, we could find this. We could uh, we could find this optimal approximation which belongs to the subset P in many machine learning applications. Now this specification of P is called the model assumption and uh, the given P, the computation of a computation of an uh, optimal uh, approximation that belongs to P from a data set S is called the training a model. OK, that means if this uh, if this optimal approximation is determined on, on the uh, data set S that belongs to the and that belongs to a subset of a uh, subset of uh, set of functions then we call this specification of p is a training a model okay now sometimes p can be described by finite number of scalar parameters in which case the method which gave rise to is it is called a parametric method okay and otherwise the method will be called a non parametric method so we will be talking about the parametric method and non parametric method when we will be talking about density estimation okay then density estimation techniques now uh, if we uh, if we classify in the uh, learnings learning experiences then we could have two different types of learning. One is the predictive learning or predictive modeling, and another is the explanatory learning or explanatory modeling. Now, uh, let us consider there are at least uh, uh, we can uh, we can consider that uh, if we uh, if the uh, if uh, there is a unmarked feature vectors which are uh, presented and uh, and will be asked to make the predictions. Uh, that means the predictions here are the determining the optimal approximations on the given feature vectors. Then unobserved responses. Uh, now this uh, this type of problems which we are going to solve uh, uh, is known as the predictive learning. That means the first. So uh, what kind of data uh, on will be uh, presented the unmarked feature vectors or unmarked data will be presented and we will be asked to make some predictions predictions means the uh, approximate optimal approximation that we have to determine on the unmarked feature vector and this type of uh, this type of learning is known as the predictive learning because here we are trying to predict the unobserved responses or class levels uh, from the given feature vectors, unmarked feature vectors. OK. Now uh, we could have the another reason for solving the problem of learning. So that could find the relationship between observed feature vectors and their corresponding observed response or class levels. That means uh, if we uh, if we make a pair of input variable and output variable, then input variable will correspond to the feature vectors and output variables will correspond to the res either response or class level. So if we if we could find the response, then the corresponding learning will be called the uh, regression or regression approach. And if we could uh, determine the class levels, then uh, we we necessarily this uh, this uh, approach will be called the classification now if we, if we could find uh, such data then uh, solving this type of problem or solving this type of problem of learning is called the explanatory learning or explanatory modeling so one is the predictive learning where we use the unmarked data and we have to we have to determine the optimal approximations or optimal functions on the unmarked uh, feature vectors. So this type of learning is called the predictive learning where we we have to predict the responses or class levels. And another type of learning is called the explanatory learning where we could uh, 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 we could have the 
observed uh, feature factors in association interest coming from the response or class levels. So when the learning will be done on this type of observed features or the level features or marked features or marked data, then this type of learning problem will be called the explanatory learning or explanatory modeling. When uh, we want to design a learning system, essentially a machine learning or deep learning system, then there could be a set of design issues. So, uh, set of design issues, and we have to address these design issues when we are working with, uh, we are working to design a learning system. Now, what are those, uh, what are those issues that we that we have to address in the design a learning system. So we have to choose the training experience very carefully. So this is one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the issues design issues that uh, we have to address. So choosing the training experience, choosing the target function, choosing a representation for the target function and choosing a function approximation algorithm. So this four of the this four are the major design issues so that we have to address now when we choose the uh, when we have to choose the training experience so we have to choose the training experience very carefully that means we have to choose the uh, type of training experience from where the our system the our learning system that we want to design we learn so Choosing the training experience uh, carefully uh, is a major task. And since the type of training experience matters in, in, in design of a learning system, therefore, uh, we have to choose the training experience carefully so that uh, the training can be properly uh, done. OK, now the type of training experience available can have significant in impact on the success on success or failure of the learner so here learner is the algorithm that you want to design okay now suppose uh, we are writing a program or we are writing a code for uh, playing checkers okay so for playing checkers now what will be the experience so experience uh, experience is the playing checkers with itself so this is the experience. So without having any uh, without having any external opponent, the checkers learning program will uh, learn or get the training by playing with itself. OK, so this is the training experience. Now, what is the performance? The performance is before uh, before uh, checkers playing program uh, that we want to design will play with some op external opponent. So how many times that uh, checkers playing program will win? So that will decide the performance. That means the number of uh, number of uh, number of own experience. Against the opponent uh, will uh, uh, will will the performance measure. Uh, in case of the checkers uh, playing. Now the first attribute that we need to know that uh, whether the training experience provides direct or indirect feedback regarding the choices made by the performance system. Now, whatever the training experience uh, uh, experience we want to choose carefully. So either that training experience may provide direct or indirect feedback okay now in case of uh, in case of the direct feedback then uh, the system might learn from the direct training examples uh, which may be uh, which may be uh, uh, which may be consisting of the individual checkers board state and the correct move now so uh, when the learning when the learning system will provide the direct feedback so direct feedback means that the system system might learn from the direct training examples 
and these direct training examples will be consisting of individuals checkers board okay individual checkers board that means each and every iteration we will have a checkers board state and in that checkers board state we have to choose the correct move that means the system we will write the program in such a way that whenever a new checkers board state will uh, arrive so in that checkers board state in that iteration in the same in that in the current iteration the correct move will be chosen okay correct move will be chosen now in case of indirect feedback so in uh, indirect feedback will be generated when uh, uh, when the when the learning uh, will be consisting of the a set of move sequences and the final outcomes of various games played so this is uh, so this will be done when the indirect feedback will be generated by the system now the second most important attribute of the training experience is the degree to which the learner controls the sequence of training examples so uh, this is another important uh, attribute in which the learner might rely on the uh, rely on the entity which is known as the teacher and teacher or supervised entity this supervised entity uh, is used to select the informative board state that means all of the board state all the board states will not be chosen okay so the board state will be the sum of the board states will be chosen which are found to be informative okay and this will uh, this will provide the correct move for uh, each uh, iteration okay so if we choose the if we choose the subset of um, subset of board states so that will give much more information about the correct move then those subset of uh, board states will be chosen and the third important attribute of the training experience is how well it represent the distribution of examples so distribution of examples means the training examples okay over which the final system performance p must be measured so we have to follow some distribution of examples so it may be some uh, it may be some predefined uh, distribution or the distribution that we want to create for uh, uh, for getting the better performance okay so two different way we can uh, select the this either we can uh, have the predefined uh, distribution that the system will follow or we can uh, we can create a distribution so that to be followed by the final system and this will facilitate to uh, this will facilitate to Uh, measure the performance uh, measure the performance p okay now in order to complete the design of the learning system so we must choose the exact type of knowledge to be learned okay and a representation for this target knowledge and learning mechanism now the next issue is choosing the target so what would be our target function so uh, we what would be our target function by choosing the target function we could get the better performance or enhanced performance so here we have to mind what type of knowledge will be learned okay so what type of knowledge will be learned and uh, how this knowledge will be used by the performance uh, program or the uh, checkers checkers playing program now let us consider uh, let us consider a checkers playing program so that can generate uh, generate some legal moves from any board state now if we look at any board state we can see that uh, there are a number of legal moves so that can be available uh, at any instant of a board state okay now not all the legal moves uh, will be chosen so we have to choose uh, we have to choose an optimal one so that we can uh, we can get the next board state in uh, in advantage stage okay so the so here the program needs only to learn how to choose the best move 
out of uh, out of these uh, legal moves okay so we have to we have to choose the optimal one from this set of legal moves on each both state and uh, we have to proceed for the next iteration the next design issue is choosing a representation for the target function now for the ideal uh, target function uh, v we must choose a representation that the learning program needs to describe the function v does so uh, here we are considering the same uh, same example that is playing checkers and the performance measure p here the percent of games won in the uh, in a tournament and training experience e means the games played against itself now if the target function is v then we have to find the approximation or representation uh, representation over the set of board states okay if the set of board state is represented by r uh, dimensional feature space then the target function representation will be represented by b cap of b here b is the board state any board state okay and b cap is the uh, representation of the approximation uh, approximation which is determined from uh, which is uh, determined from the given board state and this will be uh, this will give us the linear summation uh, linear combination of weight and uh, uh, weight and uh, weight Weight and any pieces of uh, any pieces of red or black. Okay, so here W zero is the weight, W i is the weight, and this is the linear combination uh, of weight and uh, any red or black pieces on the uh, board. Okay, so here X i represent here X i represent uh, X i may be represent any black piece any Uh, any red piece or any uh, red king or any black king okay so this will be represented by uh, the linear combination of weight and uh, weight and any red or black piece on the board now the final finally uh, we have to choose the function approximation algorithm and this function approximation yes. algorithm what we uh, so uh, here uh, we have to learn the target function a so that required a set of training examples okay and each describing a specific board state b and the training values v train of b now what is uh, v train of b so here uh, there are two uh, different uh, there are two different considerations that we have to uh, that we have to use for choosing a function approximation algorithm one is the estimating training values and another is the adjusting the weights okay so as i told you that uh, when we choose the target function then we have to uh, we have to find the representation of the target function and when we choose the representation of the target function so that will give us the linear summation of weight and uh, any black or white pieces on the board okay so now uh, we will take an example of supervised learning uh, system where we can see that there are a number of uh, modules or sub systems are uh, presented in this model so so this is a supervised learning model uh, for uh, text classification okay so here we can see that uh, here the one sub system is the one sub system is the uh, feature uh, extraction okay and this is the labels which are providing uh, to the algorithm that we have uh, that uh, we have designed and here we can see the new text so this is the training text and documents images so from where uh, from where we can extract the features and these features will constitute the 
feature vectors. So we can extract the feature vector for one subject if we want to extract, uh, if we if we perform the training of the uh, training of our uh, system or training of our algorithm, then we can use a number of uh, number of uh, number of training samples from which we can uh, get a number of feature vectors or we can obtain or we can extract a number of feature vectors. So this feature extraction module or feature extraction subsystem is one subsystem. Another subsystems uh, may include the level assigning or providing the levels uh, to the algorithm. Then uh, we could have uh, we could have the new text or the text uh, or uh, new text or document images for testing purpose from where we can extract the feature vector and this is the predictive model where we could predict the uh, expected class level or expected uh, expected uh, expected uh, response uh, of this uh, new text new text means the this text new text is provided for the testing and the training test is provided for training this machine training this algorithm that we have designed so uh, here uh, feature extraction is one module predictive model uh, is one module okay uh, then assigning assigning the class level uh, is another module here uh, providing levels since this is the supervised learning models therefore we have to provide the mark data. Okay, we have to provide the mark data. That means uh, with feature vectors, uh, we can associate the class level information so that the algorithm that we have designed can learn uh, learn about the data by uh, training. Okay, training means here. Training means here the here the model parameters. So model parameters means if we if we talk about the linear uh, linear combination of weight and uh, red and black pieces on each board, then we could find that here xi is uh, xi is provided, okay, and xi is provided. Then uh, y is uh, we have to predict uh, uh, y is provided. So initially, for initially when training uh, will be done, so xi will be provided y i will be provided so here we have to determine the weight so once the weight is determined that means when uh, when the training is done then we could use that weight in the predictive model so in the predictive model when the new text and documents is provided for testing from there we can extract the feature vector so feature vector represent uh, feature vector is denoted by xi. So xi is xi is uh, given. We have in the predictive model uh, wi that is weight is um, uh, weight is determined. So wi is uh, given, and here feature vector xi is given. Now we have to find the yi. So yi correspond to this expected level for the expected level, not for the training text for the new text which is used for testing okay testing purpose so for testing purpose the text documents image whatever uh, the samples will be used so that will be uh, that will infer some class level or the class information that to be determined uh, from this predictive model okay so initially when training will be done so here uh, feature vectors will be available which correspond to xi levels are available so levels are provided to the algorithm. Levels correspond to yi. Uh, from this xi and yi, we have to determine the weight wi, and this wi will be used in the predictive model with feature vector that has been uh, obtained from the new text document or image for testing purpose. And here we have, uh, here the predictive model will uh, used to determine the expected class level or class information for the new text document or image for testing. If you have any questions from here, you can ask me. If you did not understand anything in this supervised learning model, you can ask me.
Okay. Okay, so we are. Uh, so now uh, we will talk about the regression models. So uh, since uh, there are uh, there are a few uh, regression models that uh, we are going to uh, we are going to discuss. So before that, uh, we will present uh, the motivation behind uh, using regression models, and then we will present the general framework for all the regression uh, models that we use in machine learning and uh, finally we will talk about uh, two different uh, regression models linear regression logistic regression and if type permits then we will talk about uh, more regression uh, techniques okay now let us try to understand the motivation behind using regression models in machine learning applications Now uh, let us consider the problem of world population. Okay, world population growth. So here, uh, here uh, we are having the data from 1952, let's say uh, to uh, 2022. Okay, so here uh, we are having the uh, uh, we are having the six continent. So Asia, Oceania, Africa, Europe, Latin America, and Caribbean, North America, and the population uh, were uh, stuck to shrink. So the, this is also okay. So five uh, continents uh, we can see here, and in these five continents, how the population density is popping up. So that is to be estimated for the future years. Now we are having the data for the last 72 years. So using this uh, using this data, we could estimate the uh, we could estimate the population in these five uh, continents uh, for the future years. Now, here you can see that uh, when the estimation is done for uh, for these five continents, then we can see that this blue line, this blue curve, is uh, the estimation of the wall uh, estimation of the population density in uh, in Asia and Oceania continent. Okay, so here we can see there is a sharp rise. Okay, there is a sharp rise, and then uh, after reaching this point, there is a decline. Okay, there is a decline. In uh, another continent, if we consider Africa, then we can see that uh, yeah, there is a sharp uh, increase in the population density and it is not declined but uh, st uh, and gradually it is incre increasing okay but if we see the uh, population density uh, in for the future years then we can see that uh, uh, there is a flat uh, kind of a flat line for uh, europe population uh, which is uh, which is parallel to the uh, parallel to this x axis and for other two come other two continents we can see the uh, how the population uh, density uh, is in increasing okay for the future years so this estimation uh, this estimation can be uh, done using some regression model so if we could use if we could apply the regression model to get the estimation uh, estimation of the world population for future years then uh, we could find uh, we could find this uh, estimation based on the given data so we are having the given data for the last 72 years so based upon that we could determine the we could determine the uh, how the world population is uh, how the world population is topping up so that can be uh, determined or that can be estimated so such prediction uh, such prediction tasks can be uh, possible uh, using regression models now if we can consider the um, indian uh, in uh, population growth uh, rate in india then uh, here the population growth rate in india is uh, provided to us here we can we could see that here we are also having the data for the last 72 years okay so 
in this data uh, the uh, there are three attributes are uh, used one is the year another is population growth another is growth rate okay so here we could see uh, the uh, growth rate in percent uh, in the in percentage form and population growth in real figure and the year corresponding year now if we want to if we want to design a population growth population uh, population growth rate model uh, for india using uh, this given data then how could we uh, do that so we have to we have to apply some regression model so if we start from uh, the simple one that is the linear regression so we know about the linear uh, little bit of linear regression that we have discussed in the last class that linear regression uses the straight line equation so straight line if we could see the straight line equation y equals to mx plus c then uh, from this data uh, we can determine the model parameter so here the model parameters and uh, uh, model parameters are the slope and intercept m and uh, c okay and uh, we could fit this data into that uh, linear regression function uh, which is represented by the straight line y equals to mx plus c and then we could determine a and c from this given data and once we determine uh, once we determine the model parameters a and c then we could estimate or we could predict the population growth as well as growth rate for the future years that means what would be the population growth in 2023 in 2024 in 2025 okay so once we Uh, once we predict the population growth as well as the growth rate for 2023 then obviously using that uh, including that data or uh, including that data we could find or we could estimate the population growth as well as growth rate for the for the year 2024 and and so on so for the future years we could um, estimate or we could predict the population growth as well as growth rate by using the simple linear regression uh, simple linear regression model okay which is based on the straight line equation now we could also uh, we could also use another model so which is known as the logistic uh, regression or logistic function so if we restrict if we want to restrict uh, this uh, discussion on the logistic function or sigmoid function then uh, we could use this logistic function or sigmoid function to uh, to model this population growth problem okay now in the population growth problem so we could also use this model where uh, where time represent uh, along the x axis and population density n uh, represent along y axis now there are two different models here here we can, we could see that one is a simple one so here n is the population density of a particular region if we consider uh, if we consider uh, this subdivision durgapur or uh, durgapur town then in this durgapur town the uh, population density is represented by this capital n and r is the population growth rate okay so what we will be what we will do we will take the differentiation we will take the differentiation of n over time okay that means how the population uh, how the population density is changing over time so that can be captured by this uh, differentiation okay so dn by dt so here the we are taking the differentiation uh, differentiation of n over time and this this will give us the this will give us the growth rate which is multiplied by population density so this is a simple one we could use this but when we uh, when we consider another parameter k so here k is the carrying capacity that means this k represent the bottleneck that means certain amount of population uh, that 
then that is expected to have in this city or Durgapur town. So beyond that, uh, the capacity will increase. OK, so beyond that, there will be some uh, there will be some other issues so that will come around. OK, so this K represent if we consider this carrying capacity of population, so we could include that carrying capacity in this uh, in this formulation and we can we could modify this formulation and when this uh, when this when this formulation will be used to model the population density of a particular region like Durgapur town, then we could get this S shape curve. OK, we could get this S shape curve and this S shape curve is known as the logistic functions. OK, logistic functions. So uh, the extremum of this logistic function is one and the uh, and the uh, and the minimum value of this logistic function is zero. That means whenever we uh, we see that this curve is declined towards uh, this point, so this is tends to zero. And whenever uh, uh, this is this curve is found uh, to tends to this line, this straight line, which is parallel to the x axis, so that means this tends to one. Because extremum is one, maximum value is one, and minimum value is zero. So between these two, uh, between these two uh, limits, so we get this S shape curve, and this S shape curve is known as the logistic function or sigmoid function. Now we could use this function to model this population density problem, and when when carrying capacity parameter is considered, okay. OK, in the next class, uh, we will talk about list cause regression. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If you have any questions regarding regression models and design issues of a machine learning system, you can ask me. Otherwise, we will stop now. OK. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. So OK, that's all for today. And uh, I am sending these four slides to your uh, mail IDs, OK? I'm uh, I'm uh, sending this mail to your group. OK. okay. Hmm.